y'all. Welcome back to another Made It Monday with Crafting Cousins times two. I'm Trish. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're new to our channel, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. If you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. On Made It Mondays, Kay and I like to show you projects that we have made to sell at craft fairs online or even to put in our own home. We hope that by doing this we can give you some ideas and inspiration for projects of your own. So what are we going to be doing today? Stick around and let's find out. So for today's Made It Monday project, I wanted to make something that I've seen my sister doing lately. She makes different kinds of crosses, attaches them to boards, and adds song lyrics. I really love how it looks, and I wanted one for my home. So I scrounged around through my materials, and this is what I came up with. To see what I used and how it came together, stick around while I share my process. So my sister has been making these crosses with the old rugged cross song lyrics mounted on the board with them and I really love them so I asked her could I do my version of it and she gave me permission so that's what we're going to be doing today. So the first thing I did was I got 15 clothes pins and these are just regular old clothes pins. I think I got these at the Dollar General. I know they sell them at the Dollar Tree, at Walmart all kinds of places so they're not hard to find and you probably have some around your home. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them. You just twist them and take this little spring out. I want it out of each one. Okay so now I have all my clothespins separated. Here are my springs. I'm going to put them up and keep them because you know we'll find something to do with those later on. So the next thing I need to do is glue my pieces together. I want to glue them together just like they were when they had the spring in them, but they're going to fit closer together now that we took the spring out. I'm going to be using wood glue and I'm going to be using hot glue. The wood glue will give me the strong setting, the hot glue will give me the immediate hold. So let's glue these back together. So I have them all glued together now. And glue back together and the way we're going to form them is we're going to take and do them in sections of three. We take one and put it in the middle and then I'm going to line the other two up by the little cut that's in there where the spring was. So that's how I'm going to line them up. So we're going to have three that way, three that way, three that way, and then you're going to do three that way and then we're going to glue three more onto the end. So we're going to lay them out three, 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 and three. And we're going to glue those together. Now you can see it has formed a cross in the center and that's what I wanted it to do. So let's go glue it down and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's my cross. It's glued together. It has the cross in the center and that's what I was wanting. You would have to really get this to be a strong bond if you were only going to hang it the way it is because there's some areas that are barely touching but I'm going to be mounting this onto a pallet so this is going to work perfectly for my needs. Now I was going to take this outside and use my blowtorch and torch over the wood and give it that burnt look to give it a rustic look but it's still really windy outside. We had bad storms last night and it's still too windy for me to be using a blowtorch. So I'm going to take my ivory Waverly chalk paint. I'm almost out of the white so it's I, I guess it could be a good thing it's forcing me to go and use a different color. And then I'm either going to use this brown acrylic from Americana that's burnt umber or I have some burnt umber acrylic paints that came in a set and I also have a brown ink pad. So I'm going to use one or maybe a combination to kind of go around the edges and give it a distressed look. So let's paint that real fast. 
so there's my cross. I'm pleased with how it turned out. I like that it looks so rustic. So we'll lay it to the side and start on the next piece. Now I want to make a crown of thorns and my sister told me the way she did it was she cut a piece of wire and she wrapped other wire around it to make barbed wire. So I had this piece, I think it's probably 18 or 20 gauge wire, I'm not sure. And I think that it'll be about the right length once I finish with it. So I'm going to use it. And then I have these eye pins that I use for jewelry that are easy for me to bend. Now my sister can bend this other wire real easily, but I'm not able to do that. So I'm going to use these eye pins for my barbs. So what I'm going to do is cut off the ends with my wire cutters. And then I'm just going to find a place and I'm going to start wrapping it around and I'm going to wrap it three to four times just to give it a good barb and then I'm going to push it together so that my wraps are together okay so I've pushed it together so that it's tight and now I'm going to cut my barbs and I'm going to cut them at an angle so I'll take my wire cutters and clip them off at an angle and I want mine to stay on the wire so I'm just going to put a little dot of glue on the wire and push my barb up into it and that will keep it from moving so there we go I have two barbs now I'm going to finish this on down the wire and I will be right back so now I have finished my crown of thorns. Um, my barbed wire probably didn't turn out as good as my sister's does, but it works for my purposes. I would have colored this a darker color if I could have torched my wood, but since the wind didn't cooperate and I couldn't torch my wood, I'm going to leave my crown of thorns silver because I'm going to be mounting it onto this palette. I bought a bunch of these palettes from Joann's last year, about this time last year, you could get six in a pack for $50, but Joann's came out with a 60% off coupon right about that time, so I was able to get the pack of six palettes for just a little over $20. I've used most of them. I have this one and one more left, so I think this is what I'm going to mount my cross on. So I'm gonna put my cross there. I went online and I googled the sheet music for the Old Rugged Cross. I printed it off on my printer. I soaked it in some old coffee to coffee stain it. And while it was wet, I gently tore the edges to give it that ragged look. So I'm going to mount this on my board with this. And I'm going to put my crown of thorns up here at the top of my cross. And I think that's how I want it to be. To adhere my sheet music to my palette, I'm going to use Mod Podge. You're going to want to put a generous layer on the board and I'm also going to add some to the paper itself. To attach my cross to the palette, I'm going to use some of my wood glue and then I'm also going to use hot glue to help it stick immediately. Now I'm going to take my barbed wire crown of thorns and I'm going to loop it around the top of the cross and then I'm just going to use a dab of glue to hold it in place. And there you have it. So there's the finished project hanging on the wall in my living room and I have to say that I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I hope I've given you some inspiration or even an idea or two for things that you can make to go in your home or to sell at craft fairs. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope that you'll come back often. Join us tomorrow while Kay does Tutorial Tuesdays. And then on Wednesday, she will be back with Wednesdays. When life gives you lemons, make something sweet. Then on Thursday, I will be back with Trash to Treasure Thursdays. And as always, on Saturdays, we're here with Craft Chat. We hope that you have a great week and stay safe.